are listening to Natural Resources University. In this podcast network, our hosts are university researchers and extension specialists, opening your gateway to the science of natural resource management. Welcome back to the Natural Resources University podcast. I'm Bronson Strickland. I'm the co-host of the Deer University podcast. And uh, I was just informed that uh, I look older than, than Scott Van Pelt, who is indeed four years older than me. So I, I just want to say I appreciate all the love and support from, uh, from all the hosts of the, the NRU network. And in the, in the- Reason that's relevant, Bronson, is is what where, what are we celebrating today? That is somewhat we, similar to those age ranges. Yes, we are celebrating the fiftieth episode of NRU, and so we won't, we won't make you say if you're younger or older than that number. But it's yeah, I was gonna it. was gonna say that uh, we had almost as many episodes as as you had years behind you, but uh, I don't know how many years you have exactly behind you, so. But you don't look at they over sixty times. In, in my experience of, of making age related jokes to Steve Damaris, uh, <laughs> it, it always comes back. That that's the one thing you can mm-hmm. never escape. Uh, you're you're going to get older, and all those jokes will apply to you as well. So I say them now to Steve with with humility and understanding that that it's coming my way. Uh, but we wanted to get together today, uh, and I guess revisit some of our favorite episodes and uh, talk about the network and how we hope to grow it and possibly expand it and and what the future holds. I'll start with my podcast, Dear University, and I also want to provide a a qualifier here. I'm not going to say this is my favorite episode because all of the episodes and the guests that take the time to cooperate with us and be on it they're all fantastic, but yeah, I will say just like children, right? Ex- exactly. <laughs> but since we have launched the uh, NRU network, I think the podcast I have received the most feedback from has been our timing of fire episode. And I think Marcus, you were, were you with us recording that one with Rainer Nichols? Yeah. Well, I know I was with you when we collected the, the research data, but I'm, I don't think, I think I was absent on that particular episode. Maybe I was. I, I talked about timing a car a few times here and there, so maybe I was. But Well, if you didn't hear it, it was good, but yeah. uh, we, we got a lot of positive feedback, and, and us, you know, as professors and extension specialists, we're always trying to figure out uh, you know, why did this particular episode maybe resonate with people more so than others? Because again, going into it, we think all the topics are, are good and worthwhile. And I, I think one theme that I see a lot is when there's new information, something novel, or providing a different context. Um, and I think with this episode, uh, everyone that manages natural resources knows the benefits of fire. But, but then taking it to another level and applying it at a different time of year and discussing the trade-offs, because we're never going to say you have to do it all the time this way. It's there are pros and cons. There, there are benefits of, of diversifying the timing. And I think we did a good job of just adding some, some new knowledge to people's portfolio regarding uh, prescribed fire. I think that's what generated a lot of interest with people. And and I think that same theme resonates with one of my favorite episodes, not with Deer University, but with Fire University, was the most recent episode about fire affecting predators. And again, I, I thought that was a uh, a different way to look at it, that it's not just a direct effect of fire for uh, promoting the vegetation that the animals we're mostly managing for are going to eat or provide cover for. But again, it's that indirect effect of how is it also influencing the wildlife community, including predators. Uh, So I I guess summarizing uh, my podcast, the ones that I thought generated the most interest, I would probably think that that was kind of the novelty of it that I think resonated with people and 
and generated interest. And uh, I will now pitch it to uh, Jared, Jared Brook of Habitat University. What do you think? Well, before we uh, get into the one I like the best from Habitat University, when you were introducing your episode, Bronson, I had, as you started to go through the introduction, I had two episodes in mind that you were going to go with. And one was the one you went with, the timing of fire. The other one, which I would say is um, my favorite, and it's my favorite because it helps me answer a lot of questions and solve a lot of um, problems that I run into, is the selection of food plot forages episode. And I really like that one because I don't know how many questions I get through email or text or call asking me, what do I plant? What's the best thing to plant in my food plots? And, you know, the old biologist answer of it depends. And that, that episode, I often link people to that episode and say, hey, you know, depends on X, Y, and Z. Here's a really good resource to listen to on why that, why that matters and, and why there isn't just a one answer to give when you get that question. Jared, I, I think that gets to the, the heart of what we were trying to do here, right? As I know, at least, uh, maybe not Mitch, I'm not sure if you get to questions in pond management about food plots, but I mean, that's, that's one of the most common questions that I get, even though, you know, I mostly talk about fire. And by the way, Don, since it sounds like you're becoming a little bit of a fire of yourself, uh, picking two fire episodes there. but uh yeah I, I, you know i'm doing a lot of work on other things and talk and i guess the most visible talking about fire but i still get as many or more questions about food pods and that's really what this network is about right to to try to bring scientific information to the user and landowners or you know the the people that are that are using the natural resources so uh I'm, yeah, I'm with you. You're, didn't mean to cut you off, but go ahead. <laughs> You're right that we don't uh, we don't talk about food plots much in Pond University, but but I think one thing also the network does well is you know we emphasise taking sort of a an ecosystem approach to to managing whatever it is you're interested in your pond or your land and it's it's all connected and. And not only are the techniques connected between fire and habitat management and, and, and things like that, but, but you know, the system is, is all connected. And we talk a lot about managing land and land use around ponds for better pond management. So I think that's one of the other keys that this network focuses on is this sort of ecosystem approach. Mm -hmm. Good point. All right, so on to Habitat University. So just like Bronson said, it's hard. It's like children, hard to pick a favorite. But there's one that, and maybe I'm thinking about it because it's our most recently released episode and it's just kind of fresh in my mind. But that is uh, the episode that we just recorded with Dr. Craig Harper from University of Tennessee. That is, uh, I, Charlotte will have to tell me what episode number it is, but it's Plants, the Roots of All Wildlife. And I really like that episode because uh, plants is just like it's the title, it's the roots of all wildlife, right? It forms the basis of most habitat for most wildlife species and i think that episode really sets that foundation well um and i always learn something every time i talk to craig he's always a wealth of information and i think there's some really good tips for anyone that's interested in wildlife habitat management whether it's you know a, someone's first day owning a piece of rent uh, owning a piece of land all the way up to a seasoned biologist there's something you can learn from that episode and there's lots of actionable things that you can take and, and uh, apply to your property. So that's probably my favorite uh, one so far. Yeah, I really like that episode as well. And it's always good to hear from our uh, our mentor. That's right. Yeah. Marcus and I's uh, old graduate advisor. Yeah. And then if, if I had to if I had to pick one. And I'm going to be very diplomatic about this. So if I had to pick one from each of the other three podcasts, I think I already told you which one was my favorite Deer University one, um, the, the food plot forage selection. From Fire University, it's uh, the episode where we talked about um, oak dominance and, and the role that fire plays in oak forests. I think that was a really good episode because that's a huge problem that we have, especially in southern Indiana and in central hardwoods of – how can we create the next generation of oak forest? And I think that episode set up that issue and how there's 
a lot of different directions that a lot of different universities are taking to try to answer that question. But it was really uh, a good episode to kind of set that, what that issue is, to set it up well. And then from uh, Pond University, Mitch, I bet you can guess which one is my favorite episode from Pond University. It's got Habitat in the title. <laughs> of uh, course, I had, I had to go with the one about all about how to add uh, habitat for fish or structure for fish in ponds, which is a really good episode. I think it gives landowners a good idea of what they can do um, to improve their pond in a, a pretty meaningful way. Yeah, no, that was one of my favorites too. You know, we had a, um, a biologist from the Indiana DNR come in and talk about how they add fish habitat to reservoirs. And I think it was is a great approach to take for looking at fish habitat for, in ponds because of, you know, you can just scale it down and uh, but still think about the diversity of habitat and how you place habitat out and stuff like that. So, yeah, um, that was, yeah, I really enjoyed that one for sure. Bronson, do I, do I need to kick it to the next person or? Oh, I, I, I'll make a comment about Pond University. One of the, the titles I really like is the, the Blue Green Monster. And um, yeah, it is a catchy title, but I do know uh, our fisheries extension specialist, we're going to be doing a program in about two weeks, and that's generally going to be a, a lot of the topics he is covering. Uh, he gets questions all the time about d different blooms and the interactions it is having and so forth. So I can see where that episode is going to help a lot of people in understanding the, the complexity of an aquatic system. Yeah, and I think the one thing about blue-green algae is that not only does it have impacts for your pond and, you know, your fish and, and stuff like that, but, but it can be harmful for people and for and your pets and livestock. And so, um, you know, getting a good idea of how to identify it and how to treat it is really important if you have a pond. Well, Marcus, I think we've heard from everyone but you. Yeah, well, uh, thanks for pitching it over here, Bronson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of pitching, I, I've been pitching a lure out in the water quite a bit here lately. So... Uh, while we were talking about Pond University, there was one that you, it was something along the lines of teach a person to fish. I, I really like that episode because I think it resonates with a lot of people, right? A lot of us get into natural resources, at least the users, for fishing. And a lot of people have access to, to local ponds and things like that. And I certainly did as a kid and still do now. Love to go and fish in the ponds. And I think it's a great way to enter the field. So I really like that. Uh, hey Marcus, sorry. speaking of uh, speaking of pitching, Mississippi State had some superb pitching in the College World Series. Yeah, I, I concur. Winning a national championship, I just thought I'd throw yeah. that in. Yeah, I feel like you were waiting for an opportunity to put that in there. <laughs> yeah, good for you guys. It'd be a long time to the next national championship. Hey, the first one is is the the hard one, right? To get past yeah we're gonna cut that comment out made by jared by the way yeah <laughs> yeah in terms of uh the overall natural resources university podcast I, it's hard to believe i guess that we've gotten to 50 i can't believe that it's just it's pretty wild to think about it doesn't seem like we've been doing it that long but uh looking back on all of the awesome people that have agreed to come on our shows i guess that makes sense uh yeah i think jared i'll have to agree with you the food plot selection and i think that one is it really resonates with me for a lot of reasons one i find that topic extremely interesting just the whole bad selection thing and have since i was a kid and that really has driven a lot of my research interest for a long time but also i feel like it really uh, in, encapsulates what we're trying to do here. You know, we we get constantly get questions about food plots and what to plant. And while uh, I like to talk about managing native habitat as much as anybody else on this planet, uh, in terms of meeting the needs of our users, I, I think that one's a very important topic. It also kind of goes back to the same thing that all of us talk about quite a bit and that there's not a simple answer right 
it, it really does depend on a lot of different things and being able to talk about that context and then uh, being a part of research where we actually measured all the uh, different things that were going on and, and tried to quantify that in a way that people can understand, including us. Uh, I, I thought that was really useful. So in terms of, of Fire University, I, and I've had a lot of fun doing this and, and I've kind of taken that same approach. Uh, some people may have noticed this as we started going through the podcast and, and got several episodes in, we started to get a, a, a pretty consistent uh, trend in topics. And that was what is, what is going on right now with wildlife that, that we're all interested in game species wise. And is, you know, what is timely in terms of fire management for that species at, at the given time. And that really is coming from all the, the audience giving us feedback. What, what do you like to hear? We listen to that. And every time you know, there are some topics, we get a whole bunch of comments about or emails or, or Instagram messages, you know, all these different platforms. We're getting messages from the audience telling us what they want to hear about. And that's really fun to me because, first of all, I know what they want. But second of all, I get to go and find someone that's an expert on that topic and talk to them about it. And I think that's really fun. And oftentimes, the things that I get the most questions about are things I'm also most interested in anyway. So that's been a lot of fun doing that. For me, I, you know, it's hard to pick. But if I had to pick one, that I, I would probably pick the one that's most controversial about the species that I'm potentially most passionate about, and that would be burning during nesting for turkeys. That episode, uh, you know, I get asked to talk about fire a lot. You guys have heard me, obviously, on fire you. I talk about fire all the time, literally. Uh, but I get more questions probably about that topic with fire management than anything. And for that reason, I, I really enjoy doing that. And I, I uh, reached out to Dr. Chamberlain, who's really well known for turkey research in the turkey world, and also uh, Wild Turkey Report with David Holly was was uh, kind enough to come on and talk about it from a private landowner's perspective. But I think that really was an important uh, transition in the style that or the approach that I was taking with the podcast, and that it was a timely topic on something that people really care about and are concerned about or worried about wild turkeys. And we don't know whether we should be burning while they're nesting. So that was a really fun episode. And I thought uh, it was, it seemed to be well received, even though it's pretty controversial. And uh, my opinion is not always a popular one on that. And, and people let us know that. But uh, I, I really had fun talking about that issue, particularly. All right, Mitch, I think uh, you're one of the last ones, right? So why don't you? Let us know what your favorite Pond University episode was. Yeah, thanks, Jared. Um, you know, obviously there are a lot of a lot of great ones there, but I'd say my favorite was uh, we interviewed uh, Amy Robinson from um, she's a a pond and lake manager in Oklahoma, and and she spoke about a whole range of great topics, and we could have interviewed her for three days probably, and we'll have to get her back on the podcast. But one of the really interesting things she mentioned towards the end was that she had been contacted by by um, by someone about this weird thing in their ponds that was this white sort of tentacle looking thing that was moving around by itself in the pond and there's actually videos on on social media that we link to and and they were trying to figure out what this weird like blob was and they still don't really know they think it might be some sort of slime mold but it's basically this white tentacle looking thing but it had it's sort of autonomous it moves around by itself and so that was really cool and something i'd never seen before and, and it was cool to go and check that out on social media so um, that was probably my favorite episode just because of how bizarre that that thing was and um and yeah and 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 from the network you know i really like the approach that that you and adam took uh jared on on habitat university where you sort of step through Aldo Leopold's sort of tools, right? And you had dedicated an episode to each of those tools and you talked about how they inform current habitat management. And, and I think that was a really cool approach to, to some of the, to setting up uh, Habitat University. So now we wanna hear from you. 
from, from the audience. I mean, you, you've heard four of us discussing. I mean, there's a wide variety of episodes. Again, we're, we're very biased. We, we think they're all good. Um, but, but getting feedback from the audience uh, really helps us develop new material. And so we would love to, to hear from the audience on maybe topics. It, it could be something that uh, wasn't a primary topic of a particular episode, and you want to explore that more. Uh, you know, help us help you by giving us ideas for, for topics that we can explore further. And also, right now, we're just talking about episodes within and topics within our current network. If you have an idea that you want to pass along for, hey, you think uh, this topic area is so big and currently unexplored, maybe we add a new podcast to the network entirely. We would love to hear your your feedback on, on that as well. Um, so I think I'll, I'll ask Charlotte to join us now. She uh, she is our leader and, and makes all this stuff happen. Uh, so Charlotte, how can people reach out? How can they uh, give us advice and inform us on, on how to go forward? Yeah, so we will be having in the show notes, we'll have a link to uh, where they can actually directly tell us what their favorite episode was and if they have any ideas on a new series that they might want to add to the podcast network. Um, we can also be reached at NRU Network at gmail.com and we can be found on facebook twitter instagram and youtube at nr nr underscore university or nr university depending on which platform you're on uh, we'll be putting out a poll after this episode goes live so that you guys can vote on which episode was your favorite and really pit marcus jared mitchell and bronson against each other and uh, be sure to keep on checking the, the different uh, pages that we have for, for content that we're putting out. That, I think that's really exciting. We're, we're going to really see what the audience thinks here. So what we does, what does up, the winner get? Hmm, that's a good question, Jared. What, does what is the, the, what is the loser? You, you get to what record is... five more episodes. <laughs> <laughs> you get to record more. Uh, yeah, that's really interesting to think about, right? So yeah, so let, let's uh, let's do that. Let's put a poll up and let the audience tell us what their favorite was. But you know, going back to what you were saying, Bronson, I, I think it's really important to to get that feedback. I think all of us agree on that. Get feedback from the audience, whether you you uh, subscribe and and uh, rate the podcast on, on whatever platform you're listening or leave us a comment there or for any of those platforms that we're talking about. We love the feedback. We need the feedback so that we can uh, target things that you're interested in. But also, you know, we want to expand this and having that kind of feedback, you know, having the, the, uh, the ratings, those all help us to expand this project, having topic areas that you would like us to go into. I have a couple of areas that I'm really interested in, and uh, you know, I don't know if that's what the audience wants. So, uh, you know, I really would enjoy one on upland game bird biology. And, you know, I think that is a great area. I know that I get lots of questions about that sort of thing, and I know that's something that I'm hungry to listen to. But, you know, I really want to know what our listeners think. Yeah, and I think too that, you know, in Pond University, and I think some of the other podcasts have taken a similar approach that, you know, these first, you know, dozen episodes or so, we've really tried to cover the basics. You know, we've talked mm -hmm. a lot about some, you know, basic aquatic plant management, fish management, you know, what does a pond ecosystem look like? And I think we've really laid a foundation to, to jump into some more specific topics and really interesting topics that people might have, um, or interesting questions that people might have. And so... So, you know, I know that some of us have recorded episodes already based on emails or, or messages we've gotten from our listeners. And, and it would be great if, if all of our episodes moving forward were for, from questions and ideas that our listeners had. So, Well, thank you, everyone. Um, thanks to everybody on the NRU network here. 
Um, it, it's been a blast. I think we've all had a lot of fun, and uh, I'm really proud. Proud of what we've accomplished in the last six or seven months since we've la launched the, the network. And I think we would also regret not thanking all of the people that have taken time, number one, to listen, and number two, to, to be interviewed on our podcast. We interview some very, very busy people, and so them carving out an hour or two or three in some cases uh, to come be, be on the episode and get the word out, we really appreciate all of their help as well. So, hey, we hope to grow this. We hope to generate more interest. Of course, if this is uh, information you like, uh, if you listen to podcasts, you know the spiel that's coming here. You know, please share it. Please let other people know about it so we can grow. And hopefully after 50 more episodes, we'll get together and recap, get some feedback from the audience and, and go again. Yeah, Bronson, one, one thing that I get all the time, I know that you do because I've heard you talk about it is, you know, people talk about their neighbor is their problem. They have an issue because their neighbor doesn't do it the same way. Share this with your neighbor. If we're helping you with your management, maybe we can help you with your neighbors and, and uh, help with that issue. Well said, Marcus. Good recommendation. Okay, with that, thank you very much for tuning in to the Natural Resources University, the NRU Podcast Network, and we hope to see you soon. Natural Resources University is funded by the Renewable Resources Extension Act. New episodes are released every Tuesday. For more information, follow us on our social media platforms at nr underscore university. Thank you.